he hailed from, that is, Warnsburg, Tony Schaefer! Thank you, James. And I'd like to thank James for hosting these events and getting us all together to do this, because I think it's wonderful. Let's give James a round of applause for all he's done for us. <laughs> and uh, people look at me and say, what are you supposed to be? Not just at Halloween, uh, but tonight I'm supposed to be an English teacher with a creature that inspires more fear than anything else on the planet. I wore the uh, patched elbow uniform rather than the uh, than Dustin's black robes of assessment, but I have that uniform as well, and I keep it handy. But I thought I, I'm, I'm going to do something that's a little more along the lines of fear than along the lines of, uh, of actual horror. So I'll give you some uh, writing instructions, some writing help here. And I, I wrote down the 10 basic rules of writing that nobody has taught you that you really need to know. Rule number one, write what you don't know. If I only wrote what I know, I wouldn't have a thing to write about. When you get to a point in the writing that you're stuck, insert the phrase, suddenly all hell broke loose. You can follow that phrase with just about anything. That's worked for thousands of years, you know, like, and then he took a bite of the apple, and then suddenly all hell broke loose. That always works. Give your characters an accent, then you can avoid all of that grammar stuff. Drop names wherever possible and never use full names. It's also helpful if the name you've dropped up is made up because people don't want to look foolish by having to ask like they don't know the most important people in the world. I was just saying that to Alphonse the other day. When you sit down to write, make sure you have a scotch in one hand and a pipe or cigar in the other. That way you look thoughtful. If somebody's watching and you don't have any thoughts, look upward and try to remember where you left keys to the liquor cabinet. Rather than trying to remember words you never ever use, open your thesaurus to a random page and pick out a word and insert it somewhere. If you don't know what the word means, chances are your readers don't either. It'll, they'll, but they'll be impressed. Always appear to be acting like you're acting like you're humble so people will know you don't really need to be humble. Be sure to use foreign phrases whenever possible, especially French phrases, to demonstrate your worldliness. For example, rather than the English phrase, Mr. Poopy Pants, use the French, but since nobody understands Monsieur La Pantalon Merid, to be better understood, just say, Monsieur Pants Poopy. If you run out of anything for your characters to say, insert a joke, like a priest, a rabbi, and a minister walk into a bar. Ow! Don't bother editing your writing. Your publisher has an unpaid intern who will do that. Get all that inspiration down on paper, shove it in an envelope, and send it off. Then reward yourself by celebrating with a bottle of the best champagne, the best steak you can find, book a vacation in the Caribbean, and go ahead and pick up that new custom Jaguar convertible. Remember to pronounce it like that. Anything you want, go ahead and put it on the credit card. After all, the check will be rolling in any day now. But that's some writing advice. Now I'm going to give you some teaching experience share some of that with you here's just a random thought that I shared a while back that I think is still good um, thank God Cecil's dead zebra lives matter all right as an English teacher in the New Millennium, I have to understand the current students and quite frankly I think it's only fair to assume that they are text oriented but not text oriented like I was. They like little texting messages, while well, I like big old text that'll prop a door or window open. So to accommodate them and make sure they get the point, I first have to be aware that a long text is gonna get a TLDR response. Too long, didn't read. Cliff notes, TLDR. To be effective as an English teacher and responsible as a promoter of literature, I think I need to stay aware that a text should be no longer than a tweet. 140 characters at most, and less is better. To help the modern reader, I've rewritten some classic texts in tweet form, and all I ask is that my students take time to comprehend these fully. I think these might do the job. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Call me Ishmael. A crazy old coot tries to get even with a monster white whale for taking his leg. Bad plan, everybody dies. Hamlet by William Shakespeare. A crazy young coot tries to get even with his uncle for killing his father and marrying his mother. Bad plan, everybody dies. Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. 
A hillbilly river rat kid who smokes and cusses goes south down a river on a raft to help a slave named Jim get free and to teach us morality. Go figure. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Daisy, 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 Daisy. You're wonderful. Gatsby's a jerk. Daisy, 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 Daisy. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Heathcliff, 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 Heathcliff. No, wait, go away. 1984 by George Orwell. Ain't gonna happen, what's on TV? Lolita, by Vladimir Nabokov. Creepy old sex offender finds true love. What's up with that? Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Creepy old sex offender finds true love and some really good drugs. What's up with that? Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Burn this book. No, really. Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Kaboom, LOL. Death, R-O-T-F-L. Unstuck, R-O-T-F-L-M-A-O. -O. So it goes. Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. A one persona has a change of heart after a bad dream and gives one employee Christmas day off and a turkey. The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. Help, I'm a bug. Help, I'm a bug. Ouch. The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Ho gets pregnant. Ho gets caught. Ho gets shamed. Ho well. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Ooh, he's weird. Let's storm the castle. Torch good. Fire good. Monster bad. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Please help me find my lost dog. And you might not want to pet him. Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Oh, serial killers are just misunderstood, but this book isn't about that anyway. The Odyssey by Homer. Ulysses goes away, does stuff, comes back. I'm not sure why. Ulysses by James Joyce. Huh? No, no, really, huh? <laughs> the Awakening by Kate Chopin. Oh. Oh? Oh! Oh. Oh. Thank you. You may be leaving for now, but the nightmares will return. <laughs>